Orphans had to wear them, you know. 
last winter donated 300 yards of windseed to the asylum. Some people said it was because he couldn't sell it, but I'd rather believe that it was out of the kindness of his heart, wouldn't you? When we got out on the train, I felt as if everybody must be looking at me and pitying me, but I just went to work and imagined that I had on the most beautiful pale blue silk dress, because when you are imagining you might as well imagine something worthwhile and a big hat, all flowers and nodding plumes and a gold watch and kid gloves and boots. I felt cheered up right away and I enjoyed my trip to the island with all my might. I wasn't a bit sick coming over into the boat. Neither was Mrs. Spencer, although she generally is. She said she hadn't time to get sick watching to see that I didn't fall overboard. She said she never saw the beat of me for prowling about, but if it kept her from being sick, it's a mercy I didn't prowl, isn't it? And I wanted to see everything that was to be seen on that boat because I didn't know whether I'd ever have another opportunity. Oh, there are a lot more cherry trees all in bloom. This island is the bloomiest place. I just love it already, and I'm so glad that I'm going to live here. I've always heard that Prince Edward Island was the prettiest place in the world. And I used to imagine I was living here, but I never really expected I would. It's delightful when your imaginations come true, isn't it? But those red roads are so funny. When we were going into the train at Charlottetown and the red roads began to flash past, I asked Mrs. Spencer what made them red, and she said she didn't know and for pity's sake not to ask her any more questions. She said I must have asked her a thousand already. I suppose I had. How are you going to find out about things if you don't ask questions? And what does make those roads red? Well, now, I don't know, said Matthew. Well, that is one of the things to find out sometime, isn't it? Splendid to think of all the things there are to find out about. It just makes me feel glad to be alive. It's such an interesting world. It wouldn't be half so interesting if we know all about everything. singing 
you could grow, couldn't you? But you can't where you are. I know just exactly how you feel, little trees. I felt sorry to leave them behind this morning. You do get attached to things like that, don't you? Is there a brook anywhere near Green Gables? I forgot to ask Mrs. Spencer that. Well, now, yes, there is one right below the house. Fancy. It's always been one of my dreams to live near a brook. I never expected I would, though. Dreams don't often, don't often come true, do they? Wouldn't it be nice if they did? But just now, I feel pretty nearly perfectly happy. I can't feel exactly perfectly happy because, well, what color would you call this? She twitched one of her long glossy braids over her thin shoulder and held it up before Matthew's eyes. Matthew was not used to deciding on the tints of ladies' dresses, but in this case, there couldn't be much doubt. It's red, ain't it? He said. The girl let the braid drop back with a sigh that seemed to come from her very toes and to exhale forth all the sorrow of the sorrows of the ages. Yes, it's red, she said resignedly. Now you see why I can't be perfectly happy. Nobody could who has red hair. I don't mind the other things so much, the freckles, the green eyes, and my skinniness. I can imagine them away. I can imagine that I have a beautiful rose leaf complexion and lovely starry violet eyes, but I cannot imagine that red hair away. I do my best. I think to myself, now my hair is a glorious black, black as the raven's wing, but all the time I know it's just plain red, and it breaks my heart. It will be my lifelong sorrow. I read of a girl once in a novel who had a lifelong sorrow, but it wasn't red hair. Her hair was pure gold rippling back from her alabaster brow. What is an alabaster brow? I never could find out. Can you tell me? Well, now, I'm afraid I can't, said Matthew, who was getting a little dizzy. He felt as he had once felt in his rash youth. When another boy had enticed him on the merry-go-round at a picnic. Well, whatever it was, it must have been something nice because she was divinely beautiful. Have you ever imagined what it must feel like to be divinely beautiful? Well, no, no, I haven't. Confessed Matthew. 
shut my eyes tight. I'm always afraid of going over the bridges. I can't help imagining that perhaps just as we get to the middle, they'll crumble up like a jackknife and nip us. So I shut my eyes. But I always have to open them for all when I think they're, we're getting near the middle. Because you see, if the bridge did crumble up, I'd want to see it crumble. What a jolly rumble it makes. I always like the isn't it splendid? There's so many things to like in this world. There, we're over. Now I'll look back. Good night, dear lake of shiny waters. I always say good night to things I love, just as I would to people. I think they like it. That water looks as if it's smiling at me. When they had driven up the further hill and around the corner, Matthew said, We're pretty near home. That's green gables over. Oh, don't tell me. She interrupted breathlessly, catching at his partially raised arm and shutting her eyes that she might not see his gesture. Let me guess. I'm sure I'll guess. She opened her eyes and looked about her. They were on the crest of a hill. The sun had set some time since, but the landscape was cl still clear in the mellow afterlight. To the west, a dark church spire rose up against a merry gold sky. Below was a little valley. And beyond a long, gently rising slope with snug farmsteads scattered along it. From one to another, the child's eyes darted eager and wistful. At last, they lingered on one away to the left, far back from the road, dimly white, with blossoming trees in the twilight of the surrounding woods. Over it, in the stainless southwest sky, a great crystal white star was shining like a lamp of kindness and promise. That's it, isn't it? She said, pointing. Matthew slept, slapped the reins on the sorrel's back delightedly. Well, now, you've guessed it. But I reckon Mrs. Spencer described it so you could tell. No, she didn't. Really, she didn't. All she said might just as well have been about most of those other places. I hadn't any real idea what it looked like. But just as soon as I saw it, I felt it was home. Oh, it seems as if I must be in a dream. Do you know, my arm must be black and blue from the elbow up, for I've pinched myself so many times today. Every little while, a horrible, sickening feeling would come over me, and I'd be so afraid it was all a dream. Then I'd pinch myself so to see if it was real until suddenly I remembered that even supposing it was only a dream, I'd better go on dreaming as long as I could. So I stopped pinching, but it is real. 